So students, in this question, you can see that you have observer over here. This is the eye lens, okay? Lens of the eye of the observer. This hole is your eye. This is your eye. So eye, you know, it has two parts basically, lens and retina. So this is retina, means retina is sort of screen where image is formed and this is the lens, this is eye lens. See, initially the position of the two objects, let us take a very simple situation here. The question is that for an observer looking out through the window of a fast moving train and the nearby objects appear to move in the opposite direction to the train. So nearby, so nearby and distant objects. So there is a comparison. So we have, uh, uh, like, this is nearby object O1 and this O2 is distant object. Okay, so and we have taken a very simple situation where you can see that both the point objects O1 and O2 are in the same line. Now, the images that they are forming is here. Okay, you can clearly see that the image formed by O1 is I1 and image formed by O2 is I2. <coughs> so these images are formed on the retina and these are point size images. Now as the object moves, the image of the retina will also move. And the distance actually moved by the image, so the main point here is The distance the distance moved by the image on the retina. is perceived as motion or velocity. Okay. Since your uh, this eye has the lens over here with the distance between the eye and the retina or you can say screen and lens is almost fixed. So the angular displacement of the image, so obviously both of them have, now I have moved. So now if, I'm, if I look here, so, so I'm moving in this direction. So obviously they are, the objects will move in this direction because the image is shifting over here. So now you can see that O2, this O2 dash, the new location of this distant object, what's the angle it is that, that it is making, the angular displacement is theta 2. So here this angle is theta 2. Now look at the nearby object. Near, for nearby object, the angular displacement will be more. So more is the, so here for, this is the angular displacement for the nearby object. So although the same velocity of O2 and 
O2 objects they have the same velocity means relative velocity is same but the angular displacement of the nearby object is more than angular displacement of the far so the main point is that theta 1 which is the angular displacement of the nearby object is more than theta 2 angular displacement of the so this is the near by object this is the far off object distant object so if you compare their angular displacements so if you compare their angular displacements so you will find that the angular displacement of the nearby object is greater than the far and that is the reason due to this reason nearby objects appear to move faster okay so i hope you have understood it so the correct option is b because it is telling that he has told you the velocity is v1 and v2 so and the velocity of object with respect to the observer is v2 minus v1 but there will be same relative velocity of objects o1 and o2 so for same relative velocity of objects o1 and o2 angular displacement of nearby object is greater than angular displacement of the far off object so that is why the means although this statement is correct in itself but this is not the correct explanation that why the distant objects appear to be stationary means because the angular displacement is lesser so so this is not the correct uh, explanation the correct explanation is the reason is the angular displacement that is why 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1 okay i hope you have understood this question now let us start uh, let us do another question and this question is related with the projectile and this is a this time it's a true false type question so the earlier question that you have just done is assertion reasoning type that's a question so to tell whether it is false or true so read the question So students, <clears throat> the question you can see is the projectile fired, this is a projectile which is fired from the ground, follows a parabolic path, okay. The speed of the projectile is minimum at the top of its path. So here the velocity at the maximum height is minimum, okay. So the projectile is uh, fired at an angle theta 
and the horizontal component will be the adjacent component which is the horizontal here is v cos theta and the vertical component is v sin theta so you know that uh, this is this you can also write vx component and ax is equals to 0 whereas ay is equals to minus g that we all know so so acceleration ay is minus g it's just like the case that we have thrown the ball upwards so in, in that case also acceleration is equals to minus g ay equals to minus g so it's the same case so obviously when we throw the ball up it's vy velocity in upward direction as the ball go up vy decreases so the vertical component of the velocity starts decreasing so initially it was v sin theta v means uh, so you can say that u is equals to uy is equals to v sin theta but this uh, at the highest point so it decreases and ultimately it reaches zero over here that is why it is not going further that is why it is the maximum height it is not going further upwards because this uh, vertical velocity has become zero so or you can say the vertical component of the velocity becomes zero at the topmost point p and then again when it comes down it starts increasing and reaches back here at the same height with the same velocity when the particle hits the ground so here also this if you say c this velocity the direction is changed but the speed is same means the magnitude is remains the same so hence the speed of the projectile at the top is uh, v cos theta only there is only the horizontal component which is constant the vertical component decreases 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 ultimately becomes zero over here and then it starts again increasing so hence you can say students that uh, the speed of the projectile is minimum at the top of the because velocity has two components vx plus vy and this component is constant and this component decreases as the object goes up and ultimately so vy starts decreasing and ultimately it becomes zero at the topmost point so actually you are left with only vx so otherwise you have v equals to under the root vx square plus vy square but at the top vy equals to zero so v equals to vx only so that's the minimum speed of the projectile at the top okay students i hope you have understood it so you can find speed through this formula but at the top this becomes zero okay agreed so <clears throat> let's do another question and so I hope you have noted it down and <clears throat> so again let's do one more to false question So we have two balls of different masses 
which are thrown vertically upward with the same speed and they pass through the point of projection in the downward motion with the same speed of course we know this so students obviously you know that the answer is this is this statement is true statement yes all of you agreed last statement was also true statement yes. and this also true but the thing is how shall we explain the concept how shall we write the concept these are of course this 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 quite easy question not and you people can <clears throat> do it all by yourself but still if you would like to write how will we writing it suppose you have this ball and uh, these balls have different masses m1 m2 so we have two balls over here of course they will come down along the same path but i am making it over here that's the same thing no doubt so same path it they will follow when they will come back so here the initial velocity was u right and the final velocity is v so through the same point of projection suppose it is the building it is a tower might be i don't know still it will go down so now here they pass uh, same speed so we have to prove actually that v is equals to u so very simple you know that v square minus u square is equals to 2 as so i have thrown the ball over from here and it is come back so s is equals to 0 okay so same so point of projection it comes back so displacement is 0 and when displacement is 0 then of course a is equals to minus g but everything will be zero over here and v square is equals to u square so minus u square will go that side becomes u square so v square is equals to u square and v is equals to plus minus u so once when it is was thrown up plus velocity and when it was coming down the velocity is minus u actually okay but uh, if you would like to write only the magnitude the magnitude will be only u that is the speed so speed has no direction positive or negative so the speed is when it is coming down it's the same as initial speed so speed is same so initial speed is equals to final speed so that's the true statement all of us are agree to it so students we have done uh, assertion type true false now let us do one fill in the blanks question and this question is also from the projectile concept So let's read this question. So in this question, there is a fill in the blanks. So you have two blanks over here. So the trajectory <laughs> of a projectile. in a vertical plane is this so straight that's the trajectory means you have like like we have just drawn the diagram over here so same diagram we can draw again if we would like to draw So even all the questions we do, this is this diagram remains in our memory. Even if we don't draw it on the paper, still it is the it is there in our mind. Okay. 
so <clears throat> so the path of this curve is y equals to ax minus bx square that's the path of this curve parabolic so you can see that we have x and y coordinates so this y coordinate and y is equals to ax minus bx square so a b are constants and x y are definitely the horizontal and vertical distances suppose any point on this line like this point this point will be x y the maximum height attained is so this is students what we need to calculate what's the maximum height attained so here in this case you can see that the slope of this trajectory is zero at the topmost point right so we'll make use of this concept and slope of the trajectory will be zero what's the slope slope is dy by dx so what's y D A A A ax minus bx square so the slope uh, so the differentiation of ax is a and minus we will come out and x square is 2x so minus 2bx and this will be zero at uh, maximum height so at maximum height slope of the trajectory is zero so this gives me the value of x so x equals to a by a. so this will become minus a and this x 2b or you can take this side so simple calculation so that's the value of uh, x at maximum height so i have got uh, one point over here so that point is a by 2b so obviously if i know x i can find the value of y over here also because here the coordinates are x y so what will be y here students so y will be equals to and y will be maximum isn't it so this is the y maximum over here at maximum height so y maximum is equals to so put this value of x over here simply at any find any value of x and put it in this equation of this curve you will find get the value of y so y maximum will be a into x so that is a by 2b minus bx square so x square is x is a by 2b whole square and students this will be equals to half a square by b minus b into a square by 4b square so 1b will cancel out so 1 minus 1 by 4 will be 1 by 4 a square by b so students that's your maximum height so we have got this first blank that's 1 by 4 a square by now the second task uh, that we have is we have to find this angle theta so what about this angle theta so students uh, again you can see that theta is uh, nothing but uh, tan theta is nothing but the slope so what is this v the means this initial velocity means this is origin over here it is projected from the origin how put x equals to 0 here you will get y equals to 0 okay so when x equals to 0 y was also 0 and both points lie uh, means this 0 0 lie on the trajectory because it satisfies this equation of the curve so the slope of so that, that's your first solution so which makes now the second part this blank the angle of projection that is theta so slope of trajectory at 
at projection point. What is the slope of trajectory over here? This angle is theta, so the slope is tan theta of course. And this further the slope in terms of derivatives I write it as dy by dx. So mm, I have calculated dy by dx a minus 2bx so this gives me tan theta is equals to a minus 2b x. So students, here I know that uh, x is equals to 0, isn't it? So basically, you are calculating this tan theta at which point you are calculating it at x equals to 0, okay? So put x equals to 0 over here, so that's the slope, so, and so this term will become 0 and you get theta is equals to 10 inverse a. So strength that's your theta angle of projection. So here you will be writing 10 inverse a. So I, I hope you have got this question students, you can note it down. So now we are going to do <clears throat> another very good quality level question. So all the questions that we are doing are from IIT advanced level questions we are doing. So you can see that these questions are not tough but yes we have to be our concepts must be very clear and we are supposed to have we are supposed to think out of box that's the main thing to do these questions so not the rote kind of learning means the same that this type and i'm going to handle this type like this no as the questions don't repeat but the basic concepts remain the same basic tools remains the so students, that's our next question. So that's the question. You have a rocket. So this is a rocket. And this is the chamber of the rocket, this is the right, right end of the rocket, this is the right end and this is the left end. So this is the left end of the rocket and this is the right end of the rocket. So I can write it with capital L and this one I can write with capital R. Okay, now you have two balls you can see here. So this ball, uh, small l, this is the ball thrown from the left hand and this is the ball thrown from the right hand, so small r, small l, notations for the balls. So students, <clears throat> here, this rocket is it's gravity free space and it is moving with constant acceleration of 2 meter per second square. So if it is written over here that the direction is also shown A is equals to 2 meter per second square. So let us assume this direction as a positive direction. And the 
length of the chamber so this rocket chamber the length is 4 meters so this is 4 meter as you can see in the figure now a ball is thrown from the left end of the chamber so from the left end this ball is thrown with the speed of 0 0.3 meter per second relative to the rocket and at the same time another ball is thrown in negative x direction so students it's already given that this direction is plus x and the opposite direction will be minus x okay so that's minus x direction with a speed 0 0.2 meter per second from the right end relative to the rocket so the time in the seconds the two balls hit each other so we have to find when are these two balls going to hit okay so i hope you have understood this question so students uh, at uh, time t is equals to 0 let the speed of the rocket be v naught okay speed of rocket is equals to u you, you write it with u so that's v naught okay so speed at time t so we'll write it v naught okay now what about the speed of the ball that is thrown from the left hand? So speed of the ball thrown from the left end of the rocket. So that's uh, VL. Let's write it. L means as I've told you that this small l I will be using for the left ball, means ball thrown from the left. And what will be this VL students? So this will be already the when it moves away from the left end of the chamber, its speed was V naught. And it is thrown with this velocity 0 0.3 meter per second so obviously this is the speed of the ball when thrown from the left end so it's the initial speed what about the so that's all the speeds that we are discussing writing here speed for the rocket speed for at time t equals to 0 okay now the third is the speed of the ball thrown from the right end. So let's write it V small r. So what about this speed students? Obviously when it left this surface so its velocity was the same as the velocity of the rocket. But now in this direction it is thrown so this speed will be added up. So Z 0 0.2 meter per second. And we know that uh, acceleration of the rocket is A is equals to 2 meter per second square. So that's the situation we have. Now, students, you can see that this speed is 0 0.3 meter per second. So, this is very, very uh, little speed as compared to the acceleration that is. Uh, so, okay, this ball is detached from this left side, but see. It was thrown only with the velocity 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 meter per second 
more velocity but see the left its velocity is increasing at the rate of 2 meter per second in one second whereas this velocity when it was is just 0 0.3 meter per second so students you can see that this left end and this left wall they are just going to have a collision okay so when do they have a collision so collision between the left face so this is the left face of the chamber left end of the chamber and the left wall thrown from the left so obviously they will have a collision let's say it collision after time capital T very little time it is we'll calculate it so obviously when they're going to collide then the distance moved by the left end of the rocket and this ball thrown from the left end the distance travel will be the same so here the distance traveled by left face of the chamber left face of the chamber will be equals to distance traveled by left wall ball thrown from the left side Right, it left wall or ball thrown from the left. So we know the formula S is equals to U T plus half A T square. So we are going to use this. So obviously both of them have traveled the same distance, and that will be equals to. So for the left face, the velocity of the rocket. So that's the velocity of the left face and also the velocity of the right face and so for velocity initial velocity into time t so ut plus half into a is 2 here acceleration of the rocket t square that's equals to now the velocity of the left wall for this left wall the ball from the left is is the velocity initial velocity v naught plus 0 0.3 so ut plus half at square so here students you can see that acceleration is zero because it is not in touch with the rocket so zero t square so acceleration is zero. so what will we get so if we solve it v naught t plus so this will cancel to this is t square is equals to v naught t plus 0 0.3 t and this will be 0 so and this v naught t v naught t will also cancel out and one option t equals to 0 will also remove when we will divide both sides with t so t equals to 0 or of course they were in touch with each other at t is equals to 0 <laughs> and the now you you have got the time 0 0.3 seconds so as we are discussing that in very little time they are going to collide so just students in time we have calculated in just 0 0.3 seconds this left face and this they have collided so <clears throat> what about the maximum distance that was between the left uh, this ball thrown from the left side and this left face of the rocket so what about the means the relative displacement of the left wall with respect to the left face so i want to find out when was this distance as maximum 
see what i want to say is that i want to change this question from uh like you have to find the time when the two balls hit each other so this ball is near to the left end actually this ball thrown from the left you can see that in 0.3 second it just struck with this uh left and again collision so there is very little gap and i'm going to find out how much is the gap between the this uh when when this gap was there how how much was this gap so there has been the ball and the left end so how much is this gap this gap you can write it as even uh relative distance of means like left ball relative to the left end so if i found this distance to be much much lesser than 4 meters than this 4 meters so if the, if the distance between these two is very very less left ball and left face then i can assume that there will, there will be collision between the right ball and the left end so my question will be changed so what i will be discussing with that left end and the ball from the right so my question will be transferred to this because there is very little gap between uh, this left ball and left end and if this is negligible as compared to four then i can assume that left ball and left end it's the same thing so then i will do the question that this ball from the right how much time will it take to hit the left end so that will be my question so first of all let me find out how much is the distance is it very very little as compared to four very very negligible as compared to four let us find out so let a time t the distance is maximum okay so this is at a time t this distance is uh, between the left wall and left hand is maximum okay so at time t displacement of of left wall with respect to left face with respect to left face of the chamber so this can be written as uh, r small l left ball for small l and capital l for the left face and that you know can be written as this way and now how much is the distance uh, you can say displacement in the same line so it will be the same so again the same formula ut plus half a t square so this was your distance held by the left ball so only the difference is here it is was collision at capital time t and at, at small time t the distance between the left ball and this is maximum this distance so we'll write from here that's the same thing so v naught plus 0 0.3 the only difference is here i will be writing the time small t minus again this thing that's the distance over the left face the only thing is that it was in time capital t collision and i'm writing for the small time t when this this thing is maximum so that's so it will be v naught t plus t square because this acceleration and 1 by 2 cancels out and so i want the maximum displacement between this left face and left wall means the maximum distance between them actually so it means the slope of this graph so that's your time so students i have to write here small t so that's your 
time t and this is the distance r l l right we have this kind of graph in our ncrt book last three questions of the exercise you can see that we have this kind of graph but here the students uh, this trajectory you can see that it's uh, t square so so of course this v not t v not t will cancel out yes v not t plus 0 0.3 t just like it cancelled out here. So here also so v not t plus t square so v not t v not t cancels out and this is 0 0.3 t plus t square so that's r l l so parabola you will get definitely and this relative distance is was 0 at time 0 and here again at 0 0.3 second again it is 0 but when was this relative distance maximum so of course by symmetry the answer is supposed to be 0 0.15 second and let us find it so derivative so because here the slope is 0 so differentiating it with respect to t so this comes out to be 0. Point, so this is uh, this slope will be 0 to maximize this this to find the maximum value slope is 0 so <clears throat> so this slope is 0 let us write one more step so students you can now when you will differentiate it this will be 0 0.3 plus uh, this is 2t will be equals to 0 so students here also see this negative sign here so this this will be instead of positive this will be negative over here and here also it will be negative here also it will be negative and here also it will be negative so 0 0.3 minus 2t equals to 0 so 2t is equals to 0 0.3 and time is equals to 0 0.15 second as we were expecting so students <clears throat> it's not just one solution but we are learning with the help of this question whole physics a lot of concepts now we can find uh, the maximum displacement so what it will be so that's the maximum displacement you have that's the maximum yes yes <clears throat> so so this distance between the left ball and the left chamber at time 0 0.15 second this distance is maximum and how much is this distance so so how much is this distance students so this is 0 0.3 t minus t square this much yes that's your RLL this value so this maximum is 0 0.3 into time 0 0.15 minus 0 0.15 whole square so students you can see that 0 0.15 is common and 0 0.3 minus 0 0.15 so that's again 0 0.15 square and that's equals to 0 0.0225 meters so you can clearly see that this when there was maximum distance between the left ball and the left end ball thrown from the left end and the left end of the chamber is very very small as compared to 4 meter which is the distance between the left and the right chamber so hence our question is changed now we can assume that instead of uh, uh, means the collision between the ball thrown from the right end and uh, the ball thrown from the left hand i can assume that this ball thrown from the right hand actually colliding with the left hand because there is very little difference between the ball thrown from the left and the left hand 
So, so therefore, I, how I'm going to write it? If it comes as CBC equation, so left to base and ball thrown from left. Are located at same distance from right face so the question is changed so we need to find when left face collides with ball thrown from the right or you can say right ball or with ball thrown from right so students instead of collision between the two balls now we have shifted the question from left face and right side because the this because the left face and the ball thrown from the left they are at the same distance from the right face you can see their distance so so obviously when when the collision will take place students then collision collision means what they will both have the same position so collision will take place when left face and right ball ball thrown from the right side are at same position okay so then they will be at the same position now if you look at this scenario so you have left face over here and you have right face over here and there is a ball from the right so now this question is changed to this right so students of course this ball was moving with velocity v naught and as this is reduced but still the net velocity is in positive direction still you can see because this velocity is quite more even if you subtract minus 2 still this ball will be moving in the positive direction net velocity is still positive of this ball right so it's uh, <clears throat> it's this face has the velocity initial velocity v naught and this ball thrown from the right has this much velocity minus so because this velocity is 0 0.2 meter per second so but still this ball will move in the forward direction because the net velocity is still positive so this so after some time this ball is definitely going to move here and this left Face will reach here and there will be a collision right so if I take this uh, x naught here that is 0 x is equals to 0 at x naught and this is you know the distance between this chamber is 4 meters so here x is equals to 4 meter and here let me write this when the collision takes place so the position was x so this this position has x equal 4 meter this position has x at time t okay so at time t there is collision over here so both will be at the same position so what is the same position x okay so both are at distance x from the origin okay 
So that's the collision between the left face and this right wing. Now x is same. So x equals to this position. We know the formula that x is equals to x naught. So x naught is zero here. But for for this ball, this ball, x naught is not zero. For ball, this initial position is four meters. For left hand x not equals to 0 x it was at already at 0 but this ball was at 4 meter right yes this is positive direction got it so x is equal to and we know the formula that the s is equals to ut plus half at square and what's this x x equals to final position, this is a displacement, so final position minus initial position. That's equals to ut plus half at square. Right? So here the this x naught will go that side and you can write that this position, final position of both of them will be same at time t. So it will, it has traveled this left hand has traveled this much distance, whereas this right ball, ball from, thrown from the right has traveled this much of distance, okay. So this ball has traveled this much of distance. But the final position at time t will be the same. So I can write this formula as s is equal to x naught ut plus half a t square. So I'm going to use this formula. So the position of the object, this x, I can return as for both the left and so for left face or left hand or left face, whatever we say. So x naught. So it was for for this x naught was zero plus what is initial velocity for this initial velocity is v naught so this i am writing for left face okay this thing so you t time is t okay plus half a t square so what's the acceleration of this face so acceleration is equals to two meter per second square what is the acceleration for this acceleration is zero for the right ball so here the acceleration is 2 t square that's equals to now let's write the same position for right ball ball thrown from the right hand for right ball let's say so now what what about the initial position of the left ball it was at 4 meters so i need to write here 4 plus initial velocity so initial velocity is this, which is v naught minus 0 0.2 into t plus half acceleration. So a0 and t square. So this, this is for the right ball and this was for the left face of the rocket. So both are, both are at the same position, then only there will be collision. So final position is same for both of them, that is x at time t. So students, very simple, let's simplify this. We have to find the time of collision and the collision, so find t. So that's v naught t plus, so this will cancel out, t square is equals to, so 4 plus, that's, v naught t minus 0 0.2 into t and this will be 0 and these two terms will cancel out and I get t square plus 0 0.2 t 
minus 4 equals to 0. So bringing everything this side. That's a quad equation and we know the quadratic formula minus b plus minus under the root b square minus 4ac. So a is 1 and c is minus 4 divided by 2 into time 1 second. So 2a, so a is, sorry, <clears throat> you can see a is 1, so 2a, so, and that comes out to be, you can see here, this is 0 point minus 0 0.2 plus minus, see this is 0 0.2 square, so minus, uh, so this is 0 0.04, so 0 0.04 is negligible as compared to this 4, for the 60, so I will left with 4 only here divided by 2 and I will get it as minus uh, 0 0.1 plus minus 2. So I will get the options as time t is equals to minus 0. Point. So minus 2.1 and plus 1.9 second so obviously the answer will be positive so as we have taken the approximation over here so approximately time is two second so after two second there will be the collision so i hope that you people have understood this question so, shall we do one more question? What do you think, students? Yes. Uh, yes. Is it okay for today or shall we do one more question? What do you say? Okay. So we'll stop here then. <clears throat>